Hey what's up and hello and welcome back everybody to another video tutorial of Royce Academy. In this video tutorial I'm going to discuss on a very very important subject or uh, a particular aspect or a particular topic of that subject. The name of the subject is biosignaling. And the same topic that I'm going to discuss today which is the major deal of our discussion today is coming into the chapter of hormones which is furnished within the imp another important subject called biochemistry. So it's a very important part to know and very important subject to study. Uh, basically this entire subject is actually uh, inculcated within a different uh, area or different field of research coming within the area field of bioscience. Uh, the name of that field is cell biology or advanced cell biology precisely or specifically speaking. So today's uh, uh, matter of discussion is dealing with the cascading of the insulin hormone specifically. So insulin hormone cascading is coming out of with this biosignaling part which is uh, thereby coming under within the bioscience field and also in some aspects we, it is also uh, preferred by the food science field in case of the gate excel examinations and also in case of the bioscience field of CSI and NET examinations and all of the GRF and PhD exam examinations that are held nationally okay which are uh, good or weightaged examinations right uh, which are prestigious examinations held nationally all over India now this particular topic which I'm going to discuss today that the insulin cascading or the function of insulin how it's happening how the uh, insulin hormone is able to maintain the normal blood glucose level in our body uh, basically I'm going to have a breakthrough or a limelight on that particular article or that particular topic only so let's have a look uh, that how uh, the insulin is functioning in order to do or operating itself or transregulating within different parts of the body in order to maintain the normal blood glucose level. Okay, so I've prepared a rough diagram of uh, the anatomy. Okay, this part is the cerebral cortex, which is not needless to say I didn't draw it. Okay, because that's not relevant to our discussion today. And this is a portion of the tongue. This particular portion is tongue. These are the teeth, and this is the nose, and these are the meninges, uh, uh, the covering of the skull, and over which covering of the uh, uh, covering over the skull actually. Uh, the area, the layers of the cerebral cortex, the layer which covers the skull, skull actually, meninges. So this is particularly the brain, and this is the nose, and these are the lips, and this part is the epiglottis, this one right here, and this is the uh, trachea. Okay, the laryngeal portion of the larynx, voice box is present over here, and this is the portion of the pharynx. Okay, pharynx means the buccal cavity transcends within the pharynx, and the pharynx is again transcending downward in the wider or wider uh, globular like or uh, sac like uh, structure called the esophagus and the esophagus the same through the gastroesophageal valve or cavity enters within the gastric portion the fundus the main body of the stomach this is the stomach right here and attached with the stomach is the this is the duodenal portion of the small intestine and this one is the pancreas, this is the liver, and this one is the gallbladder. Okay, this is what the rough diagram, anatomical diagram, which is uh, needed to be drawn. Now, why did I draw this diagram anyway? I'm going to let you people know right now. You see the blood vessels right here that are drawn with the red color. Okay, I represented with the red, red color. And the blood, it's like a leaf lamina, the midrib of the leaf lamina, which, having, which are having the uh, projection of the veins on either side of the midrib of the lamina. That is present within the pancreas here, right? Now, Let's have a projection of uh, what the uh, what this particular area, this vasculated area, which is present within the pancreas, this particular area is having. This vasculated area is actually the only major functional area which is uh, responsible for majorly secreting three different and three major hormones that helps regulating different uh, activities, specifically the glucose metabolism and steroid hormone production in case of cell signaling and all all these things and biosignaling all in our body. The name of these three hormones are the glucagon secreted by the alpha cells of this area, the insulin secreted by the beta cells of this area, and the somatostatin which is secreted by the delta cells of this particular vasculated area. Now what is the name of this area? The name of this area is none other than islet of Langerhans. Okay. Now let's have a projected or amplified view of the beta cells which helps in secreting the insulin which is the major deal of our discussion today, right? So. Let's have a projection right up here. Okay. So 
let this be the beta cell. Suppose this is the beta cell I represent in a square like diagram, okay, in a square form. And now let us represent all these blood vessels, the veins and the capillaries, whatever it is, present right over this area, this particular portion right here. You see this. Uh, and, our, and along with the duodenal portion also right over here, let's represent the blood vessel separately. Okay. Now, so let this be a blood vessel which I project right from this duodenal portion. Now, before going into what is happening, I'm going to give a limelight that how, uh, from what, which, which aspect the metabolism is happening. We know that there are certain few cycles within our body, like the neoglucogenesis, Cori cycle, glycogenolysis, and glycogenesis, glycolysis, all these things are representing the metabolism, anabolism as well as the catabolism, of, that is synthesis and catabolism coming under the glucose metabolism part within the biochemistry. And now, suppose a person who is very much obese, a person who is likely to be taking or intaking uh, too much high quantity of the glucose or carbohydrate molecule, right? Now, th that carbohydrate molecule slowly enters through the mouth you know our stomach and digestion partially now the, the, the carbohydrate is the only proximate compound of food that starts its catabolism or breakdown from mouth and then it ends up in the small intestine via the stomach so partial digestion also happens in the stomach and then ultimately ends up in the small intestine in the duodenal portion particularly which is highly vasculated and also the villi the, the absorbed tower like lactal like projections which is having lacteal, okay, the lacteal projections in the small intestine, which helps in absorbing all the end products of the uh, glucose, uh, end products of carbohydrate, proteins and fats, whatever it is, it helps in absorbing all these things. Now, glucose is the ultimate end product of the carbohydrate metabolism, which is absorbed uh, to some extent from the stomach blood vessels, the stomach lining, and also, and also the major quantity is getting absorbed from the small intestine through the star like projections, which is called villi. Now, in some cases, suppose the dietary consumption of the glucose is too much higher, okay. Now in that case what happens, the glucose catabolism needed to be done in order to maintain the normal glucose level or the normal storage of the glucose in form of the glycogen in the liver or the normal catabolism of the glucose through the process of glycolysis and normal uptake of the glucose molecule or return of the glucose molecule in course of heavy exercise uh, via the Cori cycle or the neoglucogenesis, right? Now, in cert, in, in, suppose in a certain condition where the glucose consumption is too much higher or the glucose deposition within the body is going higher at the expense of its catabolism, the reverse pathways. In that case, what happens is these glucose gets absorbed readily within the blood vessels from the small intestine and firstly, they target the RBCs, red blood corpuscles. Okay, now let me draw an RBC here. Suppose this is an RBC. Okay. Biconcave, like uh, biconvix, whatever it is, biconcave or biconcave. It's a concave like structure or biconvix, it might be uh, said as. A biconcave, sorry, biconcave. It's actually flatter in both the ends, flatter in both the ends, like this. It's actually like this, biconcave like structure. Okay. Now these mammalian RBCs or the human RBCs, whatever it is, these RBCs help in playing the major crucial role of carrying the oxygen or transporting the oxygen from the lungs via heart through different other organs and muscles and tissues of a body, right? Now these RBCs for their metabolism helps in taking or acquiring the glucose molecule that is getting absorbed via the intestinal blood capillaries. Uh, getting absorbed within the blood by the intestinal capillaries or the end, by the end, ultimate end product of the ending of the digestion of the metabolic pathway or catabolic pathway of the glucose is happening. Now, when the glucose molecules are getting absorbed, let us represent the glucose molecules in this form. In this black colored portion, these are nothing but the glucose molecules. Okay. Now, this RBCs readily accepts the glucose molecule via a transporter okay now let us draw the rbc from a top view okay this is what the top view of an rbc is it's a bicon cave like structure okay 
Now, within this RBCs, there is present a particular type of transporter, okay, within the cell mem plasma membrane of the RBCs, which is called GLUT transporter. GLUT, GLUT transporter. This is what the GLUT transporter is. Now, this freely roaming glucose molecules in the blood are readily accepted. What did I say? They are readily accepted by the RBCs. So, these glucose molecules ultimately enters within the RBCs and helps in providing the metabolic energy for the functioning of the RBCs in order to carry uh, the, uh, in order to do the transport mechanism or transregulatory mechanism of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Right. Now, suppose in, cert in a certain condition, like I said, when the glucose consumption is too much higher or the glucose, uh, glucose deposition within the blood glucose, within the blood or the blood glucose level is certainly higher at some certain condition or certain step, then what happens? The RBCs have a particular limit of getting saturated by the glucose or acquiring the glucose molecule, the GLUT transporter, GLUT1. Okay, so these transporters present right over here on the plasma membrane of RBCs are called GLUT transporter, GLUT1. This GLUT1 is nothing but glucose transporter type 1. Okay, it's kind of protein molecule. Okay, it's a kind of protein which helps in clamping on or uh, which helps in latching on to the glucose molecule and readily endocytos the glucose molecule within the cell. There is a particular pathway how the blood transporters are working in order to trans uh, influx the glucose molecule within the cell. Okay, so basically what happened, what's happening is these RBCs are having a particular saturation point. Okay, it's up to which the glucose molecules can enter within the RBCs. And when the RBCs reach that particular saturation point or the particular uh, limit ahead of that or further that, the RBCs are not able to uh, accept the glucose molecules further. In that case, what happens? The RBCs stop accepting the glucose molecules. And these glucose molecules what happens? These glucose molecules are freely roaming. Uh, then at that case, these glucose molecules are freely roaming within the blood and get transregulated or transported to different other cells of different other organs and muscles and even the cerebral cortex that is the brain of a body. Okay. Now, that thing happens when the R RBCs is too much saturated with the glucose molecule. Right. It's getting too much saturated. When the glucose molecules oxygen saturation, uh, which is the normal saturation is 80 to 90 percent, or in the adult healthy it's 92 percent. That's called normal saturation of oxygen. That's decreasing because the glucose molecules are not giving enough enough space to uh, uh, let enter the oxygen molecules within the RBCs, right? So in that case, what happens? This glucose molecules freely roam within the blood with it through the blood capillaries and get transported to different other organs and muscles and cells of a body right now what happens these glucose molecules uh, via blood are transported to liver as well as to the pancreas okay now in the liver and the pancreas another type of glucose molecule glucose transporter is present which is called GLUT2 which is known as blood 2 or glucose transporter 2 okay glucose transporter 2 now this glucose transporter 2 molecule uh, this, this is called blood 2 helps in acquiring the glucose molecule and readily and uh, uh, readily leads that or uh, pushes the glucose molecule the glucose it's, it's a transporter of glucose right it helps in acquiring the glucose from the extracellular space from the blood capillaries and transport it within the cell now let this cell be the beta cell of the islet of langerhans 
Okay. This will be the beta cell of dilator of Langerhans, where the glucose molecule is getting transported. Now, one wins, once the glucose molecule uh, get transported or enter within the islet of Langerhans of the islet of Langerhans of the uh, uh, beta cells of the islet of Langerhans of the pancreas, then this glucose undergoes the pathway of glycolysis and forms pyruvate. Okay, pyruvate compound. This pyruvate undergoes the pathway of acetylation and forms acetyl CoA. The acetyl CoA enters within the TCA cycle, enters within the TCA cycle and helps in liberating electron transporters like NADH, FADH. These helps in donating the ATP molecule. The electron transport chain helps in coupling the ATP synthesis and forms the ATP molecule. Now, what does this ATP molecule do here? Remember one thing, before going into the further explanation, I'm going to let you know that each and every cell has a particular type of voltage-gated ion channels. Okay, These voltage-gated ion channels are nothing but these channels are adapted for maintaining the electrochemical potential or the potential difference, the voltage within and outside the cell of any kind of eukaryotic or multicellular organisms, even in some cases in prokaryotic or, or primitive organisms also, uh, in, so to some extent the voltage gated ion channels are found. Particularly we are dealing with the multicellular organisms or the eukaryotic cell in this case. So voltage gated ion channels with that relies within the plasma membrane or the cell membrane is very much prevalent and common. Okay. Now this voltage gated ion channels Thus, voltage-gated ion channels helps in closing this ATP molecules. This ATP molecules will directly come over here and latch on or bind directly from. directly from itself within the on the uh, ion channel of potassium ions this ion channel is of nothing but of the potassium the k plus k plus ion channels okay which helps in regulating the voltage in a reversible manner so that is uh, K potassium ion channels are helping in uh, the regulating the voltage of the plasma membrane that is these ion channels helps in regulating the impulse of any active process via the plasma membrane by influx and efflux of itself that is these ions sometimes readily enters within the cell these positive ion channels and helps in depolarization depolarization means uh, it increases the positive charge inside the membrane. This, you see the negative charge right out here. This negative charge becomes positive charge, which is called depolarization. And when the inside of the membrane becomes uh, negative charge and the outside membrane becomes positive charge, in case of any, uh, uh, in case of any, what I'll say, uh, uh, effluxing. Effluxing means exiting flux. Then in that case, what happens? The positive ions exit from the cell. And the positive ions, when it exits from the cell, it helps in giving rise to repolarization. Repolarization means resting potential. And the reverse, that is the depolarization, it is called the action potential. Right? So the re we have two things. Repolarization, that is the inside of the cell membrane is becoming highly negative. That is called resting potential. And action potential is called the depolarization, that is outside of the cell membrane is become negative and inside of the cell membrane is becoming positive. Now, when the ATP molecule, this ATP molecule comes and latches on, clamps on, on over the potassium ion channels, it closes the potassium ion channel. Now when the potassium ion channel closes, the potassium ion concentration within the cell or inside the cell increases. Now this increase helps in depolarization of the entire cell membrane. This entire cell membrane particularly helps in depolarization. Hence, what it will do, this potassium ion channels will also depolarize the calcium ion channels. 
Okay. So this is what the calcium ion channels are present right over here. These are what this is what the calcium ion channel is. And now once when the depolarization uh, it's it helps in transferring a signal or depolarization depolarizing signal an electrochemical signal to the calcium ion channels it will help in influx of the calcium ion channels so influx means it will help in the migration migration or inward movement of the calcium double positive ion channel from outside on the extracellular space or extracellular matrix ecm towards inside towards the uh, to, towards within the cell inside of the cell now once when once this ca2 plus ion channels inside the cell increases the concentration of the ca2 plus are increasing okay now this increased concentration of ca2 plus ion channel will also helping uh, helping in helping what uh, help helping generation or liberation of the more ca2 plus ion channels from endoplasmic reticulum let this be the nucleus right over here okay the nucleus of the cell is present right over here okay and this is what the endoplasmic reticulum is this endoplasmic reticulum is nothing but this this portion this portion right here is known as the endoplasmic reticulum this endoplasmic reticulum is nothing but a, a reservoir of calcium double positive ions okay now this increase or depolarization of the calcium double positive ions will also help in creating pressure over the endoplasmic reticulum which would rather helping in liberating more ca2 plus ions so from here also the ca2 plus ions will be generated or liberated within the cell now too much concentration, too much higher concentration of this CA2 plus ions now, what it will do? It will help in triggering, triggering what? The genome uh, that is the gene present within the chromatin. Okay, it will help in triggering the formation of the uh, mRNA. It will activate the transcription factor of the DNA to form the mRNA. And now that mRNA through the course of its translation will help in synthesizing the insulin molecule. So this CA2 plus ion is triggering uh, that particular signaling pathway or cascade pathway which is helping regulating the act transcription factor or activation factor of the DNA molecule. And that DNA molecule what it will do uh, that the gene present within the DNA molecule uh, this is all, all, all about uh, Coil in a resting stage, which is present haphazardly, it will activate the transcription factor of the DNA, which will which would rather produce the mRNA molecule, and the mRNA in the course of translation would produce the protein, the protein that 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 is nothing but that particular hormone called insulin. Now, the insulin hormone via this endoplasmic reticulum here, present over here, will get mature. That is, insulin has two parts: the subunit A and subunit B. Now both of that subunits, both of those subunits will get matured and ultimately go to the secretory vesicles. Let this be the secretory vesicles right over here. These vesicles, let it be the secretory vesicles. Okay. Sorry, let this be, this vesicles particularly right over here be the secretory vesicles. Now the secretory vesicles, what they will do? They will help in acquiring the insulin hormone from here okay and mature make it uh, make the conformation of the hormone more mature and functional and liberate it out of the cell okay so this this thing in the curly uh, ribbon like structure which is drawn over here is nothing but the insulin hormone the mature insulin function and insulin hormone so you see that how step by step uh, the CA2 plus ion, the K plus is getting depolarized, the, it, it is again depolarizing the CA2 plus, which is again depolarizing the, uh, which is CA2 plus, which is again itself getting depolarized and triggering the activation factors of the gene to uh, help synthesize the insulin hormone. Now the insulin, once it gets mature, it enters into the secretory vesicle and from there it is being 
projected out of the cell. That is the beta cell, the beta cell of the islet of Langerhans. Now this insulin hormone is freely rotating within what? Within the blood vessels. Okay. This insulin hormone is again coming where? Within the blood. Okay. From the islet of Langerhans, from this vasculation only, it is coming within the blood vessels. Now it is roaming or transregulated to different parts of a body, to different cells, different tissues and organs via the blood. Now, what this insulin is doing anyway? Now, if you've seen the mechanism of the GLUT1 glucose transporter 1 present over the RBCs, you've seen the mechanism of the GLUT transporter 2 or glucose transporter 2 present on the islet of Langerhans or the beta cells, the pancreatic cells, and also present over the liver cells. And now, the insulin hormone will go via the blood, it will go towards. It will go to the cerebral cortex and this insulin hormone will also go to the uh, muscle cells. Okay. The muscle cells of our hand, of our limbs, of the skeletal muscle cells that are attached with the voluntary and involuntary muscles, the striated and non striated muscles of the heart. Okay. And uh, now to the heart muscles which are deltoid in shape. Okay, to the, to the heart muscles. And also to the fatty tissues, the adipose layer tissues, the trans fat, which is present in our body, this trans fatty tissues and all, where the fat is being deposited within our body. So, and also it is, it's going to liver. Also this hormone is again transregulated to the liver. Okay. Now this is what it is. Now, these are the five major areas where the glucose affects the most, affects the most, okay, the functioning of these particularly five areas in our body are being affected mostly by the glucose. There are many other areas, like kidney also is there, which is being affected mostly by the glucose. Okay, let's draw the kidney too. Okay, let's draw the kidney too. Okay, this is what the kidney is. Now, what happens is when this insulin hormone is transregulated to diff all these portions, all these ma majorly affected areas of a body, what happens is there is another transporter called the GLUT transporter, the GLUT2. This GLUT, uh, sorry, the GLUT4. Okay, the GLUT4. This is present within the brain. Okay, this is called. GLUT4. Here also the same blood transporter is present. GLUT4. In the liver also it is present. In the kidney also it is present. In the striated heart muscles, the same thing is present. And also in the fatty tissues or the adipose tissues of a body, the same blood transporter is present. Okay, now what this blood transporter does? This insulin hormone comes and binds here on the blood transporters. This insulin hormone comes and binds over the blood transporters here. Okay. This binds over the blood transporters. Now, 
there is a receptor, a secondary receptor called tyrosine kinase. It, it is getting activated by, by the beta subunit or the B subunit of the insulin hormone. Now the tyrosine kinase molecule helps in activating this GLUT4, glucose transporter 4. The glucose transporter 4 is the only glucose transporter that is present all over our body, spread all over our body, uh, irrespective of any organ. It is a organ non-specific glucose transporter that are present mostly in any of the cell membranes, but it gets activated only by the insulin because GLUT transporter 4 is insulin dependent, unlike GLUT2 and GLUT1, which is insulin independent or insulin non-dependent. Okay. Now the GLUT4 is insulin dependent. Now this GLUT transporter 4, GLUT transporter 4, uh, which gets activated by, via the insulin cascading or secondary messenger cascading molecule, this GLUT transporter channels a little bit dynamic, more dynamic compared to the GLUT1, GLUT2, GLUT3 and all other GLUT transporters present. Now this GLUT4 has a specialized capability of functioning heuristic. Uh, in a heuristic manner that is um, acting more fast compared to other blood transporters. So it will help in acquiring more glucose molecule and help in triggering the metabolism of the glucose molecules faster. That is the catabolism of the glucose molecules faster. Now what happens is once the glucose molecules are entering, uh, this once these glucose molecules are entering through this blood transporter 4 within the kidneys and uh, the liver cells the muscle cells, the brain and all, the glucose molecules undergoes the formation of the glycolysis which forms pyruvate, okay? Pyruvate. Now the pyruvate forms acetyl CoA and this acetyl CoA forms the TCA cycle which helps in liberating the ATP via the electron transport chain. And this pyruvate to acetyl CA conversion leads to the CO2 uh, liberation and the TCA cycle also helps in the CO2 liberation. Here also the same process pyruvate to acetyl CoA with CO2 liberation and acetyl CoA to ATP formation. Here also the same process is happening, the CO2 ATP formation is happening and CO2 liberation is happening. Here also ATP is lastly formed, the CO2 is liberated, here also CO2 gets liberated, ATP is formed and in the tissues also, in the tissues another thing happens, here not only the CO2 molecule is liberated and ATP is formed, but the liver which is having the acetyl coa acetyl coa undergoes the lipid biosynthesis the triacyl glycerol biosynthesis part in the presence of dihydroxyacetone phosphate that is coming from the intermediary step of the glycolysis path okay now this acetyl phosphate uh, is converted to the uh, is uh, leading its role or taking its role to where to the glycolysis and also to the triacyl glycerol part because this acetyl CoA is the only molecule which helps in donating the acyl CoA and removing the acyl CoA group from the uh, glycerol uh, phosphates and the dihydroxyacetone phosphate and helps in liberation of the triacyl glycerol molecule. So acetyl CoA is a major leading, uh, leading uh, molecule which helps in biosynthesis of the lipids or the triacyl glycerols. Now, this acetyl CA molecule, which is forming the triacylglycerol TAG, that TAG molecule directly comes within this adipose tissues and gets deposited here. So this TAG molecule, triacylglycerol, that is specifically formed within the liver only via the biosynthesis of the lipid biosynthesis from the acetyl COA uh, that is being formed at the, at the, as the end product of the glycolysis helps in formation of the triacylglycerol. That triacylglycerol is getting deposited in the fatty tissues. And the insulin hormone and, and the glucose, which is entering within the fatty, fatty tissues or the adipose tissues within the adipocyte cells, also undergoes the same pathway of formation of the triacylglycerol here also. Triacylglycerol here also. And helps in depositing this triacylglycerol here along with the same liberation of CO2 and ATP molecule. Now, the, all these CO2 molecules which are being generated. 
from a different all these different organs the cerebral cortex the muscle tissues the liver the kidney the uh, cardiac muscles and the adipose tissues are being removed or detoxified out of the body via three or four other mechanisms like decarbamination and which leads to the expiration and the expuls expulsion of the CO2 out of a body then the bicarbonate ion buffer formation and uh, the urea cycle where the CO2 is being detoxified so this is how the insulin hormone is totally removing the glucose level by activating the insulin dependent blood 4 or glucose transporter 4 and helping in acquiring more glucose molecule at the same time and metabolizing the glucose molecule to various other end products which ultimately ends up uh, in detoxification right so this is what the blood transporter 1 blood transporter 2 and the blood transporter 4 is acting in in some adverse condition where the glucose concentration within the blood rises the normal blood glucose level is 60 to 90 milligram per 100 ml of blood so insulin hormone act, uh, acts fast in obviously in most of the cases when the uh, blood glucose level somehow increases right so uh, this is what all about how uh, from the uh, stomach from the pancreas and liver and small intestine where the blood vessels and the rbc's and beta cells which are not, not last but not the least the most important part where the insulin is being synthesized and the insulin uh, comes comes to these, all these different organs and helps in setting out the glucose molecule in different pathways and thereby uh, compensating or thereby keeping in balance or maintaining the normal balance of the glucose within the uh, blood okay so if you like this video please do subscribe my channel in order to get, it, get more such latest updated videos of food science and bioscience as well and also share the video as much as possible comment down in the comment section below and hit the thumbs up button and last but not least please do subscribe my channel because that's the only way you can show your love and affection for me and i can help benefit your people with more such videos and tutorials thank you